Society has departed the world yesterday at 8:30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, America, which is about 3:30 in the afternoon our time. So, of course, I realize that many of you uh, may have never even met him, or may have just known him briefly. Slovenia was not on his regular schedule for travel, but Maharaj preached around the world, especially in India, Mayapur in that area of West Bengal, Ujjain, other places in India, London, very much in America, and in other places also in uh, Europe, such as uh, uh, where else did he preach? He preached in Oman, Holland, and in other places. Switzerland very much, oh yes. And uh, Chicago was the place that I knew Maharaj mostly. Um, the departure of Maharaj was a shock, although it was something that we were hoping wouldn't happen. We knew that he was undergoing this medical struggle with the coronavirus. But it was, there was such a positive feeling around the world that Maharaj would come out of it and again be back in action. But somehow Krishna had another program. 
the loss to our society is quite huge because not only because of what he did but because but of who he was what he did is a whole list of many many when we say innovative achievements to spread Krishna consciousness around the world. He created the first documentary movie on the life of his divine grace, Shri Prabhupada, which was called Dalai Sharad. It's, it's available in the MP3 CDs. Um, that was many, many years ago. Um, he was Prabhupada's personal servant and cook, mostly his cook. And he learned not only cooking from Prabhupada, Prabhupada personally instructed him in uh, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. When he came to Krishna consciousness, he was a little bit older than most of the devotees at the time. Uh, he had been a student in Germany for many years and traveled around. He also came to Slovenia when he was a student. <laughs> I found that out from, uh, from Ananta Prabhu today. Um, yeah, and then when he joined, Prabhupada immediately gave him first and second initiation right on the spot. And then, of course, only a little, uh, little time after that, less than a year, he received sannyasa initiation. Prabhupada could understand that here was somebody who was very spiritually adept, both very intelligent and at the same time very inclined to spiritual activities. Uh, Maharaj has shown throughout his life how he has uh, inspired hundreds and thousands, not, not hundreds and thousands, but th tens and thousands of devotees to take up Krishna consciousness. Um, he's traveled and did many seminars, classes, symposiums, regular classes, retreats, and uh, he's uh, somehow or other initiated thousands and thousands and thousands of devotees. One thing you can tell about a spiritual person is how many people he makes Krishna conscious. You know, they say, you can tell a tree by its fruit, <laughs> and not only, not the abundance of fruit, but both the abundance and the quality of that fruit. Uh, I personally know Maharaj's disciples, mostly in London, America, and in, also in Ujjain. I've had much association with them, and I find them, they are perfect gentlemen gentle ladies. They have all good qualities. They exhibit his uh, character, his qualities, his compassion in the way they deal with other people. They love to serve devotees. <laughs> they love to serve devotees. Maharaj trained his devotees in that way and they have shown, they have taken his training to, the, to perfection. So we can see the quality of a great soul by how many other great souls he can make. That is really the indication. Of course, on a personal level, I had much, a lot of association with Maharaj, very intimate association, very sweet association. Maharaj was a warrior in his Krishna consciousness. He was fearless. Just before he came to America, which was not long after he somehow or other co contacted the coronavirus, but he was in Ujjain and staying there. And uh, but the devotees in America, he has a project in Cal M, sorry, Florida, which is a a uh, self-sufficient farm that he's developed. And he has many disciples in America, so he wanted to come and assist them because they needed his association. The devotees in India told him, don't go, it's dangerous. He said, he said, well, they need me. I am their leader. If they're out there preaching and I'm hiding, what kind of leader am I? 
This is what he said. There's actually a recorded video of him speaking this just prior to his, uh, uh, you know, leaving India and coming to America. So he was fearless. I had a personal experience with him in 2001. Perhaps many of you know that during that year, there was the, uh, they call it the 9-11, the Twin Towers. I was with Maharaj in Chicago. We were the only two sannyasis at the time. And uh, we had been watching the whole thing on the TV, how they were showing what was happening with the planes and the buildings and how, you know, now the country was getting, what we say, very much overwhelmed with fear. There will be a great Islamic uh, backlash. People were stopped traveling. Right after that, the airports were completely empty. There was nobody in the airports. So I was with Maharaj, and uh, we both, of course, are regular travelers. So I said, I'll think I'll stay in Chicago for a little while longer. I'll postpone my next trip. It's not a good time to travel. He had a, a schedule that he had to continue on. So I was saying, Maharaj, I, I don't think it's a good time to travel, I said to him. He looked at me and he said something. He said, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a hero dies once. <laughs> That's all, I, I didn't say anything after that. <laughs> And he was dead serious. He was fearless, and that's how he, he lived his Krishna conscious life, wanting to make a difference in the lives of people who needed his association. At the same time, he had meant much to offer in giving Krishna consciousness to others. On a personal level, he was so affectionate. If you met him, you would get a hug. <laughs> The ladies, I'm not sure if they would get a hug, but they would get much attention and respect. He was always respectful to everybody he met and showed great uh, care and concern for everyone. He always inquired into how everyone was doing whenever he met devotees. Um, and so that was one of his trademarks. He was very, very affectionate. Um, and as a gentleman, he was ideal. Uh, he's known within the ISKCON society as the epitome of Vaishnav culture. He lived in such a way that he followed very carefully the rules and principles of how a Vaishnav should behave. And of course, when Prabhupada was asked how do you tell a Vaishnava what is their behavior? Prabhupada said, he is a perfect gentleman. And of course, we also extend that, gentle lady. In other words, a person who gives respects to all. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a cultured person. One who sees not only the body, but sees the soul within the body, therefore gives respect to that soul as being part and parcel of Krishna. So Maharaj was exemplary in all his, what we say, activities. His love for his devotees were shown in so many ways. He loved to cook. He used to cook for Prabhupada. And he tells many stories of how he tried to cook for Prabhupada and sometimes Prabhupada was a little bit not satisfied, <laughs> but still, Prabhupada kept him on because he could see that this person was actually a wonderful devotee and he trained, trained Maharaj into cooking so many nice things. And he personally took care of Prabhupada when Prabhupada was in his last days. It was Tamal Krishna Goswami, uh, Bhakti Churu Maharaj, and a few other devotees who were right around Prabhupada's bedside every minute during the last few days of Prabhupada's, uh, you know, stay with us in this world. 
So he learned so much and got so much inspiration from Srila Prabhupada. So his departure is a, it's like a thunderbolt upon the whole society. And what is the, of course, what can we say? Krishna has his plans. And one who lives simply to serve the Lord is under the care of Krishna 100%. So Krishna, for some reason, wanted to take him back to the spiritual world. And sometimes we say that, when sometimes when somebody leaves them the, the world, we say, oh, they went back to Godhead. But that's not always true. <laughs> you know, because we like to say that because it sounds good. <laughs> and it makes us feel good, but at the same time, it's not always correct. But we can say that with Maharaj. <laughs> Without a doubt, you know, his life was exemplary and his devotion was there. And his love for the devotees, his love for people in general was just amazing. Um, he established this project in Ujjain. And Ujjain, we all know, is one of the holy places in India. It's a place where they have the Kumbha Mela every 12 years, the Ard Mela. Mela. Um, it's an outstanding holy place. And uh, he was given a plot of land to develop a temple. And for many years, I remember, I actually went to the opening in 2008, I think it was, 2008. A grand building was opened. If you ever get a chance, when this coronavirus seems to dissipate, <laughs> and you have a chance to be in India, please, go see that temple, it's, a, it's huge. Beautiful temple with five altars, Jagannath, one altar, huge Jagannath deities, Gornitai, Radha Krishna, Krishna Balaram, and Lord Nishringadev also, five altars. A uh, guest house, beautiful guest house, a restaurant, a beautiful residence for devotees to live. And added to that, just recently, in the last four years, he he built and organized and he guided the development of an Ayurvedic uh, hospital. One of the, I, I spent two years, two times, uh, two times in two different years, at least a month each time there, getting treatment and it's one of the best places to go for Ayurvedic treatment. Maharaj never liked to do anything second. He was first class in everything. He would make the bets pizza. <laughs> he loved pizza. Every time we'd go to his place for a visit, there was we always know there was a day for pizza. <laughs> and he made sure his cooks were the best. He also developed a particular type of foodstuffs that is called bottomless pizza. And I don't know if you know what a bottomless pizza is. It's not like something you wear, you know. <laughs> Bottomless pizza is tomato and cheese, that's all. <laughs> There's no bread. <laughs> and he developed it, and he, he created it of his own ideas, and he cooked it, and I was thinking, hmm, this sounds like some kind of speculation. <laughs> Because, you know, I have a, an Italian background. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, us Italians, we know all about pizza. <laughs> so, but when I tasted it, I realized this is superior to anything else. He, he makes it, I don't know how he makes it, but he, it's really beautiful. Um, so Maharaj loved to cook, he loved to serve his devotees, he loved to preach, he took care of them, he did everything, it was amazing. He was nonstop, you know, he, he worked more harder than anybody else that I have ever seen. He was always traveling, always preaching, always giving his association. Um, there's so much that he contributed to in our society. And um, 
The sad part is, along with his disappearance, we're going to miss his association. Personally, for me, when I heard that he left, I actually couldn't come to the reality it actually happened. It's just like, you know something is true, but you can't really accept it. It's like, it's just too, too much. And I, I kept thinking, no, it's not right. It's not like that. I'm slowly coming to the point of understanding that he did leave. But that's how much his presence was, at least in my life and in the life for many others. It was just a, it was so powerful that when Krishna pulled it away for whatever reason, it was like too much to, to, to understand, to, to adapt to. But the said, the difficult part now is now is that he's left around the world thousands of disciples. I think, I'm not sure, and there's one disciple here, also in, in Slovenia who is his disciple. Uh, please take some time. These devotees really need support in this time. It's a crisis for them emotionally and spiritually. Uh, we were going to try to do that with his disciples everywhere in the world, especially in places where he has like London, he has thousands of disciples in London. Chicago, especially in America and other places. So those devotees really need some, it's not only support, but some, you know, Krishna Conscious Association. So if you can find time, or actually please make time, and uh, give your time and attention to those who are close to him or who took initiation from that would be a great service to him and to also to those devotees that you help. Because you know when when something is going on in your life and it just everything falls apart, that's when you need others more than any time. Somebody who cares from you, somebody who loves you, somebody who wants to spend some time with you. That helps you to go through the, 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 the thing, but at the same time going through it means to also inspire those devotees to continue in their Krishna consciousness, despite the fact that it's an emotional. I remember when Prabhupada left, it was just like, it was such a blow to our society that some devotees couldn't even stay in the society. They had just, it's too much they had to leave. They couldn't, couldn't understand that Prabhupada was no longer personally present. And so it's difficult when you have that relationship with a, such a, not only a spirit, your spiritual master, but a very powerful spiritual master who is loved not only by their disciples, but by the whole society. Uh, for the next, today especially, there are so many programs going on on the computer, on the internet, uh, today, tomorrow, and on Tuesday morning here, we'll be giving a class on Maharaj, and we'll also ask anyone who's in attendance if they would like to say something in honor of Maharaj, or just give some, some, uh, some personal, you know, appreciation. So I don't have a lot to say. It's just, uh, we're all feeling great loss by his departure. But for Maharaj, he's back with Krishna. <laughs> he says that Vaishnav died, uh, thou art living still in sound. He reasons ill who say that Vaishnavs die. When thou art living still in sound, Vaishnavs die to live and in living spread the holy name around. They, a Vaishnava doesn't die because when they're living, they're spreading the holy name and when they're dying, they're doing the same thing somewhere. <laughs> Prabhupada used the example, if you take a, a wheat husking machine and you put it in Slovenia, what will it do? It'll husk wheat. <laughs> you take it and you bring it to London, it'll husk wheat. <laughs> 
wherever you put it, it does the same thing. So this is the nature of a great soul. Wherever they are, they're always preaching Krishna consciousness and inspiring others in devotional life. So uh, this is a little bit about Maharaj's life. I can think of many personal incidents that I had with Maharaj, which were, were both powerful learning experiences to me because he was an example for perfect Krishna conscious. I wasn't always like up to the standard, but being in the association, I, I had to learn. <laughs> I had to somehow or other see that this was an example that I could follow, someone who could inspire me, someone who sometimes even corrected me when I was off, and I was appreciating that. Well, that was Maharaj, mm -hmm. but he always did it, in a, he did it in a loving way, not in a, uh, you know, an arrogant way or in a corrective way, but in a way that was, uh, you felt that this person cares, and therefore they're helping you by giving you some guidance, some correction. So, uh, yeah. Um, these are a few of the examples. My strongest personal experiences were within were Chicago. I spent 17 years in Chicago. No, yeah, 17 years in Chicago as the Resident Sannyasity. They used to call me the non-resident resident. <laughs> because I was never there, but <laughs> I was always traveling. <laughs> I would go come back occasionally. Especially when I started coming to Europe. And I started coming to this area in, in Croatia in 2002, and in, Cro in Slovenia in 2003. And then I started to preach here, I started to spend a lot more time here. So I wasn't spending so much time in Chicago. But the temple president of Chicago took initiation from Maharaj. And therefore, of course, I was very close with the temple president. And so the three of us would spend much time together, uh, just talking Krishna consciousness or worshiping together, like that. So I had... Uh, well, I was lucky to have so much of Maharaj's personal association. Just before he came here to America, uh, I don't know if I said this, but the devotees were telling him, Maharaj, you know, it's not a good time to go to America. He says, they need me. The devotees are there, they're preaching, they're all alone. I need to give them my association, I'm their leader. So he took a risk coming, but he knew that, that that's what it takes. He said, uh, for a leader to want to give their life to spread Krishna consciousness, he said, that is what a leader means. He says, if you can't give your life for Krishna, then what is the use of taking the position of leadership? There's a saying, which applies to everyone. If you have nothing to die for, you have nothing to live for. <laughs> if you have nothing to die for, you have nothing to live for. So we live in order to somehow or other become fully Krishna conscious. And if we have to die while we're becoming Krishna conscious, then that is the success of our life. <laughs> because that will be the last birth in this material world. Because this material world is what it is. It's just a place that we've been placed in it because somehow or other we have left Krishna and we wanted to somehow or other be in this world and try to enjoy separate from Krishna. But this place is a place of rectification. It's a place of reformation. It's a place of transformation. Transforming our consciousness and going back to Krishna in the spiritual world. Sometimes we think, what is the spiritual world? We have no, let me say, understanding what is the spiritual world. But we can read from these Shastras, we can hear from the great souls. 
Because the great souls, they not only speak about the spiritual world, they're actually living in it, in their day-to-day -day life. Although they appear to be in this world, they don't touch this world, the pure devotees of the Lord. And so we learn from them that there is another place <laughs> where there's no death, there's no birth, there's no disease, there's no old age. Everyone is joyfully engaged in a variety of activities serving the Lord in ultimate happiness and which is full of unlimited variety. <laughs> Sometimes we think, well, what do, you, what do you do in the spiritual world? Well, there's people in the spiritual world who will say, well, what are you guys doing there? <laughs> you have a few activities, we have many more. <laughs> Because spirit is unlimited, material is always limited. <laughs> so we have a few varieties here, but our varieties are always changing. Why? Because we can't find satisfaction in anything we do in this world. It, we have to keep changing in order to somehow or other feel that there is, life has some meaning. But. In the spiritual world, change is there, but the change also brings more and more greater knowledge and greater happiness and greater opportunities to associate with Krishna and to associate with those who are in love with Krishna. So It's real. Honest to God. It's, re it's a real place. <laughs> it always seems so far removed from our experience, but there is another world. Just like Hare Krishna, Panchatattva Ki Jai. We're all familiar with the ant population. You've seen ants walk around. Yeah? So two ants are talking to each other. And one ant says, You know, I think something is up there. And the other ant says, No, you just had too much sugar, that's all. <laughs> There's nothing up there. This ant world is all there is. This is this. So that's how, that's our existence. We're like little ants. This material world is so, so small. And there's so many planets, so many universes. And there's millions of universes. And this universe is just like one universe. In a bag of millions and millions of universes. And the whole material creation makes up one-fourth of existence. The other three-fourths is the spiritual world. It's unlimited, full of variety and eternal. That is our home. <laughs> that we don't belong in this place. We're here. And you have to use your time to somehow or other become Krishna conscious and then go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> that's, our, that's our focus. So persons like Maharaj, who perfected their life, they realize that. And therefore for them, whether they live or whether they die, it's the same. Prabhupada tells the story of a Uh, a, a person who was giving out blessings, he was a great person. He blessed four people, four different types of people. And he said to the uh, prince, this prince, you know, royal, royal life, he said, he said, live forever, don't die. <laughs> That's my blessing. <laughs> to the brahmachari, he said, uh, die immediately. <laughs> to the sage, to the great soul, he said, you can live or you can die. And to the butcher, you know what a butcher, yeah? He said, don't live, don't die. <laughs> and then Prabhupada explained, for the prince, he's enjoying royal happiness, he's very sinful, he's doing everything and so, continue to live, because when you die, you'll go to hell. So don't die. <laughs> For a brahmachari, he has to sleep on the floor, eat kitri. <laughs> it's a very hard life. 
<laughs> so better die immediately <laughs> and go back to Godhead. <laughs> You know, not, I mean, brahmacharis have changed a little bit nowadays, but, but that's the traditional brahmachari. <laughs> and for the uh, for the sadhu, for the sadhu, he says, you can live or you can die. Now you're you're living in the spiritual consciousness, and when you die, you go to the spiritual world. So don't live. Whether you can die or you can live, everything is the same. And for the butcher, you're living in hell, and if you die, you'll go to hell. So don't live, don't die. <laughs> so these are the four blessings. So, so we know that for Pras, for Bhakti Chiru Maharaj and those who went before him, you know, for them, whether they stay here or whether they go back to Godhead, it's whatever Krishna wants. That's how they live. It's whatever Krishna wants. And Prabhupada taught us that, that whatever Krishna wants, we know that's the best thing. So we, Krishna wants us to become Krishna conscious. Krishna wants us to become happy. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Krishna wants you to be happy and he knows what will make you happy, your devotion to him. So Krishna is doing everything in his way to inspire us to become more and more, uh, what we say, enthusiastic to use our time, intelligence, energy, resources to ultimately go back home, back to God. Whatever we achieve in this material world is finished in time. You can't take anything with you and basically you can't enjoy anything you have now anyway. <laughs> we're trying to enjoy in this world but we have to understand that whatever enjoyment we're getting is just like if someone comes up to you and says, uh, you haven't eaten for like um, like a week. And someone says, here, here is two grains of nicely cooked rice. Have a feast. And you think, well, oh, this guy, this guy is playing a joke on me or something. He's just making my life more miserable. I want to eat a full meal. So that's material life. You're trying to enjoy a full meal and you're getting maybe a grain and a half of rice. <laughs> this is the material world. We, yeah, we can't really, you know, stay here. Dukalayam, Asasvatam, Anityasubham, Krishna says. It's a place of misery. So what will make our spiritual master happy? What will make Krishna happy is when we seriously apply everything they've given us in Krishna consciousness and use it to become fully fully happy because when you're when you're Krishna conscious you're happy <laughs> it's synonymous with the term Krishna consciousness and then when you're happy in Krishna consciousness it's just a matter of time before you return back home back to Krishna so so death is just a stepping stone to eternal life. It's not a bad thing. But for people we love and people who are dear to us and people who have given us so much and people who have shown how they've given so much to others, their departure really hurts because they were really an inspiration for us in our own life and they also were very dear to us on the personal level. So, Therefore, for us, the loss of a great soul is really hurts the heart. But for them, it's their perfection in spiritual life. They go back to the spiritual world. So we want to honor, but to honor great souls means to honor the Lord. <laughs> There's no difference. In fact, to honor the Lord is second. To honor the great souls is first. When you honor great souls, you actually honor the Lord in the best possible way. Krishna loves those who love his devotees. We, Baladananda Maharaj gave a very, very wonderful class this morning speaking about the six loving exchanges between Vaishnavas and how that really makes our society what it is so wonderful. 
uh, said our society is like one big family. Uh, we may not sometimes see it like that, but that's actually how Prabhupada created. We're creating a spiritual family in the material world, and then when we leave, we'll join the spiritual family in the spiritual world. So what does that mean? That means taking care of each other, spending time with each other, inspiring each other, not criticizing each other. Criticism has no value, really. Even if you're right, it doesn't matter. It just pollutes the mind and pollutes the atmosphere. Always look for the good in devotees, and when you do that, you'll find you can associate with anybody and everybody when you start seeing the good in everyone. Because then it becomes something wonderful. It doesn't matter who you're with because that person has good qualities and you look for that rather than finding their faults. So this is what it means to practice Krishna consciousness completely is to actually develop that loving relationship. And this is how we honor our spiritual master. And this is how we honor and the Lord by working together in a cooperative way to inspire each other in our, in our Krishna consciousness. And Bhakti Charu Maharaj, I can say personally from my own experience, he was the best in that category, one of the best. I know others who are also, let me say, exemplary. And how they treat devotees and how they inspire devotees. And devotees who know them immediately they're always thinking, what can I do for that person? I'm so inspired by the way they, they, they relate to us. They just, they just want to serve, you know? They just want to serve. So we feel great loss that Maharaj is gone, and it, it is because he had so many, many projects going, so many big projects. And so we were just hoping that somehow or other that the devotees who are left, they can continue on to glorify Maharaj by continuing to uh, give their energy time uh, toward the projects that he started and make them complete and perfect. Like that. Especially, he started a farm community in Florida. That's where he was when he contacted the virus. He wanted to develop a self-sufficient farm community, uh, as Prabhupada had said, in order to uh, show the world how, what is simple living and Krishna consciousness lifestyle. So, I, there's much more I can say about Maharaj on a personal level, we'll get a chance again. So for now, I just want to inspire everyone, take some time, and if you can, even through the media, connect with his disciples and just inspire them in their Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, make them feel that they, they haven't lost anything. Now they just have to rearrange their life in such a way as to serve their spiritual master in separation. Because as Prabhupada says, whether you serve in person or whether you serve in separation, it's the same. <laughs> That's the same. The heart actually becomes more devotional in the mood of separation because the longing for that person's presence becomes stronger when they are not there. I think we even appreciate people when they're not with us as much more than when we appreciate them when we're with us. I don't want to say that, but sometimes it is true. It's like we have you have someone you love and Sometimes we take each other for granted because they say familiarity breeds indifference. And familiarity breeds contempt, sometimes contempt, but at least indifference. But when we lose the association of someone who's dear to us, and sometimes when we lose it for a long time, then we, then we really start to appreciate what we had when we had that association. Mm -hmm. So we're all going through that with Maharaj now. Now, uh, how much we look back and think, how much more I wish I had taken his association, I wish more I had taken his instructions to heart. 
Okay, so if there's anyone would like to say anything in relationship to Bhakti Charu Maharaj, please, you know, or anything related to the principle of service and separation. Please uh, raise your hand if you feel inspired to. Anyone? Yes, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say that uh, I really liked uh, his uh, kitans, bhajans. Mm. It's very sweet and easy, simple. Yeah. I very sweet, very, simple, yeah. Very, a lot, a, often. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying many, many beautiful, when we say uh, Vaishnav bhajans, really sweet. Tavakatam ritam tapsta jivanam dihita. What is the rest of you know? Anyway. Hmm. Hmm. So sweet, so sweet. He's famous for that particular, it's a verse actually from Srimad Bhagavatam from the 10th Canto, which is sung by the gopis who are glorifying the great souls who give their life for the, for the, for the, for the benefit of others. It's a beautiful verse. And he turned it into a beautiful song. And there's others, of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Nice to see you. I was met with Maharaj in Vrindavan, mm. and my first poetry, which I write, is small poetry, just I write, I write his name. Poetry. Yes. And uh, with Maharaj, I work with a veteran movie also. Mm. Yes. Wonderful production. <laughs> and, uh, I have it in my library. <laughs> I was uh, with him in Ilavat and I take care of movie in Vrindavan also. Mm -hmm. And a uh, few times I cook for him. Oh. Yes. Did he like I it? Him. Did he like your cooking? Yes. Good. <laughs> I, I cook him a uh, few times kitchen. <laughs> and uh, when my daughter born, mm. he gave to her name Gandharvika. 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 That's a beautiful and, uh, name. He took uh, her in the hand and played 10 minutes. <laughs> he loved children. Yes. There's so many fo yeah. photos of Maharaj playing with the children, and giving Lord. his love to the kids. Yeah. And always he's really, always he asks whenever we meet and he always sweet. Mm. There's only one, this, this, he had three moods, sweet, sweeter, and most sweet. <laughs> he was so sweet. I would be embarrassed in front of him, I would feel like a fool because he was so sweet and I was like, you know, some like, I was like bitter melon. <laughs> Maharaj, yeah, he's, he loved children, how he took care of children. I, I was going, I have a large photo collection of Maharaj's pictures from around the world, and I was just looking at him this morning, and I was seeing many pictures of him with, with children. Maybe you were in one of them, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he loved to be with the children, he loved to be with the families, he loved to be with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Now when I think of the movie about Chiron, I'll think of you. <laughs> nice. That was famous when it came out. It was revolutionary. Anything else? Anyone else would like to express a few words? Or? Yes, Prabhu, back there. Hare Krishna. So, uh, many times when we used to go to Mayapur, Kirtan Mela, and um, hearing festival, Bhagavatam, 
So we have Maharaj there sharing his thoughts, his realizations, Bhagavatam lectures, mm. Kirtans. He was very much famous for his Kirtans, his Bhajans. And I have many friends who are disciples of Maharaj. And uh, they used to always play Maharaj songs mm. in their MP3 players. <laughs> so every time you go near to them, they are doing something they have in some in loudspeaker the Maharaj Bhajan's playing on. Mm. So as soon as I heard yesterday that it was according to uh, US timing, it was in the morning I think in Florida. Mm. So I just uh, wrote about Maharaj and I tagged all of my disciples of Maharaj mm. and uh, they responded back. So I could hear like all of my friends, disciples of Maharaj, they were very much heartbroken. And uh, all I could do is, I cannot just, you know, compensate that thing. They have lost their Guru Maharaj and nobody can fulfill that uh, position. So, mm. but all I could do yesterday, just talk to them, right. have a chat with them, and inspire with them, that's all. They need that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. He, like he said, he entered the hearts of his devotees in such a very deep way that when now that he left, it's many of them are lost. They're feeling lost. <laughs> but we have to let them know that we have a society of devotees who care and are willing to give them support and whatever they need to continue on in their Krishna consciousness. Thank you for being for telling us that. Yes, and I, you just reminded me, when he left, it was yesterday, was Guru Purnima, which is really a very, very, very auspicious day. It's the beginning of the Chaturmasya, and it's also the appearance day of Vyasadev. Yeah, Vyasadev, which is, he's the original uh, spiritual teacher. That's why when we sit on the Vyasa sun, it's the seat of Vyasa, so anyone who sits on the Vyasa sun is the representative of Vyasadev. So that was his appearance day, and yesterday was also the disappearance of Sanatan Goswami. And you know, when I think of Maharaj, and I also read about the qualities of Sanatan Goswami, I see there's a lot of similarities there. Sanatan Goswami, Although he was a powerful Goswami, and he wrote many books and excavated holy places and performed many, many austerities, he would go into villages and go into the homes of the villagers in Vrindavan and just sit with them, say, how's your wife? How's the family? How's the children? How's the crops? In other words, he would, he would take a personal interest in him. And he would stay sometimes a whole month within one village. And when he would leave, they would all cry. They would all cry. Like they felt like they, 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 one of their family members was leaving. He, he was so personal with them. So I remember, I was thinking, you know, Maharaj was very much like that. He was always so personal with everybody. The last time I saw him, <laughs> I was in Mayapur, this was in January this year. And uh, so I was in Mayapur. And uh, I had been there since December 13th. I, I arrived in Mayapur and I left on January 18th. So when I came, I saw him there. And then he left and went traveling. And then uh, he came back towards the end, the time when I was just about ready to leave a few days earlier. He said, oh, you're still here. <laughs> I said, yes, Maharaj. And he said, you're spending a lot of time in Mayapur. <laughs> I said, uh, I didn't say what I wanted to say because about two years ago he told me, spend time in Mayapur. <laughs> he said, we, we, we want you to stay in Mayapur and preach more here. And then when I saw him after a month, he said, you're still here. I said, yes. <laughs> so it was kind of sweet. <laughs> it was really sweet. <laughs> and, uh, and then he said, of course, of course, he thanked me for staying there because he wanted me to preach to the devotees there. So 
And of course, Mayapur is, as a place for all of us, it's our home. It's the center of the ISKCON society, Sri Ram Mayapur, it's the place where Lord Chaitanya. Janmastan is there, Karmastan is there. Well, Lord Chaitanya performed his activities and the whole Sankirtan movement started from Sriman Sridam Mayapur. <laughs> so that was Maharaj's special place, Mayapur. He loved Mayapur, but he was giving a lot of his time to developing his project in Ujjain and traveling around the world. Okay, so uh, we're coming up to our time limit. So thank you very much for all attending today. Please keep healthy. You know, be careful. This coronavirus is still, and I don't want to sound negative, but it's on the uprise again. It's It took a deep, a depth, what do you call it? What a, a dip, I'm sorry, a dip in May and June, and now it's coming back up. So be more careful, be, be, be as careful as you was when you first. And now many of the countries are starting reconsidering locking down. So if it gets any worse, that will, what, then there's going to be another lockdown. In the UK, I don't know if you heard of a city called Leicester, it's a huge city. The whole city is on lockdown. Nobody can move out of their homes. It's so bad there. So be careful. Um, we want everyone to stay healthy. We want you to stick around <laughs> and be with us for, for, you know, as long as you want to be with us. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very difficult time for the planet in general. There's a lot of purification going on. And there's a lot of difficulties coming with that purification. So be careful with your health and uh, work together. And give each other support. And most important, chant the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare. Thank you. Shila Bhakti Chiru Maharaj Ki Jai, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>